uh, good morning or good, good, good evening and good morning. Today I'm going to talk about uh, you won't find God if you keep using your brain. And this is something that I see that's so prevalent now. Um, just how heady and, and, and just how focused on the mind and mental people are today. Um, and ironically enough, there's so many mental health issues that are being propagated and talked about as well. So I want to start this off with scripture. Uh, the book of Proverbs says, as water reflects the face, so does your life reflect the heart. The book of Jeremiah says that if you seek, you will find me when you seek me with your heart. The Bible also says that in God in the Bible also says, I, the Lord, search the minds and the hearts of men to reward everybody according to their conduct. All right. There's another verse that I want to reference as well. Um, but in the, the book of Proverbs also says, guard your heart for everything that you do flows from it. Right. So these are a couple of, of biblical verses. Um, and I want to touch on them because, you know, I do I do you know, I do I do talks with a lot of men and and um, have conversations with men. And one of the things I find with certain men is that guys love to say, let's say, you know, guys used to guys love to. And I don't want to say love to, but there are a lot of guys that used to be Christians or or if you don't, you know, they used to be followers of Jesus Christ. So they thought. Right. And they'll say, yeah, Eddie, you know, I, you know, I, I, I salute you, um, you know, find, doing this whole Christian walk thing. I salute you doing the whole follow Jesus thing. I, I tried that before. It didn't work for me. Right. And so I, I've heard that several times. Right. And, and, and for, for starters, I tried it before, too. Right. I tried it before, too. This wasn't the first. I didn't just hear about Jesus this this late in my life. Right. I, I, I tried it before, too. And you know what? It didn't work for me either. Right. And, and so one, one of the one of the one of the arrogance of people, I think, is that they think that because something didn't work for them, that it must not be right. As if they have the masterful approach, as if they put their whole heart, mind, body and soul into it and gave it all of everything that they have. And then it didn't work. Right. Not that, oh, they grew up in church. They read the Bible a couple of times and said a couple of prayers and then nothing really happened. But this whole new age thing. You know, that's what they get into. They start getting into the Egyptology. They start getting into the, to the, 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 the uh, what you call it? The seven hermetic principles, the, the spiritual laws, as above, so below. They start getting into all of these spiritual laws, which myself I got into as well. Right. And um, in my, in my experience, I won't say in all situations, it is in a lot of people's case through marijuana that opens the doorway for those new belief systems and understandings to be coming in people come to be coming into people's lives right and that's what begins to open the mind right it begins to people have an open mind right and um so here, here's the thing right if you said let's just say there's a philip there's a philip screw in a wall or yeah, there's a no there's a flathead screw in the wall that's the, just like the one line the flat and you said, um, yeah, Eddie, you know, that screw can't come out the wall. I tried it before with my Phillips screwdriver and it didn't work. So I just went and I, I went to, for something else. Right. <clears throat> you you tried it from an approach using the wrong tool to get it open. So you're not going to say that, hey, that screw can't come out the wall because you tried it before. But all you have is a Phillips screwdriver. And, and, and the screw is a, is a flathead screwdriver. Right. You would have to be given the right tool first to know if it works, right? So the Phillips screwdriver that a lot of people use, right? The Phillips screwdriver that the majority of people are using is their minds, right? They get into this whole, I've read the Bible, I've studied it, I looked at the Greek, I read the Septuagint, I read these concordances, and I tried it and it didn't work, right? The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, you will find me when you seek me with your heart, right? You will find me when you seek me with your heart. So you cannot use a heady approach. That's that's where you get like a lot of these theologians, right? Hebrew Israelites, right? They get into this whole, it becomes a mind game, right? So the, in, in the mind is not of the spirit. The heart gives life to our imagination. The, the imaginations come from the heart, right? Which is the Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, or heart has imagined what God has planned for those who love him. Now the mind, this is how, I, how I've ex experienced it interprets the imagination of the heart but it starts in the heart first so if you don't have a pure heart then you you don't have pure imaginations even coming to your mind for you to find anything with you have to have something pure to give life to the thoughts that you will have so the heart gives life to every thought that you have so if you have an unclean heart or if you don't have the right heart then you cannot give life to the right approach to find what it is you're looking and seeking to find 
you have to have a pure heart first. All right, and that's one of the things I pray for daily and that I believe we should all pray for. The Bible says, give me a pure heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Right, give me pure, a pure, clean hands and a pure heart. That you're praying for a pure heart. So sometimes a lot of guys, they get people get hurt in their life and their heart becomes hard. Right, and then they be, they get focused on this mind thing. Right, it gets it gets it's it's all about logic, right? And there's, there's nothing logical about faith. Right, the Bible says if you say to a mountain, get up and jump into the sea, and you do not doubt it will it will get up and jump into the sea. That's not logical. Logical means that mountain is planted into the ground. So this faith is a faith of the spirit. So if you've only attacked the Bible with your mind, if you've only attacked a pursuit to follow and find God with your mind, you're not going to find them like that. And then the Bible confirms it in Jeremiah. You, you will find me when you seek me with your heart. So the, the issue is a lot of people don't know how to use their heart. Right. I didn't know how to use my heart for a while. It becomes this this mind overcoming, conquering with the intelligence of the mind. Right. It is how, how to outwit, how to out overcome. Right. And the heart is not a, the mind is expression. The mind is what I'm speaking to you with right now. The mind is intellectual. The mind is the ability to articulate. Right. These are the mind. Right. So I was talking to a brother recently. We were talking about his heart. And then he, I said, all right, brother, this is what I want you to do. And shout out to you if you listen. I know I can say your name, but I said, how about I just want you to just start praying. You, you haven't prayed in a long time. Just start praying twice a day. And he's like, all right, man, I'll pray, but I need you to give me something that I can. I want to open my heart because I was telling him what, you know, I was listening to him talking and telling him about his heart. And he said, um, all right, I'll do the prayer thing. But can you give me something? I want to open my heart. Give me something to open my heart. And he's not understanding that he's still trying to use his mind. You still trying to use a mental, you know, you're trying to take a mental position to open in your heart. You're not going to open your heart with your mind. You're not going to open your heart by reading books. You're not going to open your heart from a point of intellect. You're going to open your heart when you conceive the desire within your heart to open it. This is not intellectual, right? There's nothing articulate about opening your heart. It's something you do. It's like, and I used to give the analogy before. If I said, all right, if you want to, if you want to get your relationship with God, right, you, that, that slipper you're holding in your hand. Like you're, you're holding that, 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 that hammer in your hand, you got to drop the hammer. And, and then guys say, well, how do I drop the hammer that's in my hand, right? I wouldn't say to you, oh, you got to go into, you got to go into your brain and fire the neurons into your left arm and cause the neurons to loosen up the muscle, the bones and tendons in your fingers to let the hammer go. No, it doesn't work like that, right? You don't, you don't, you don't intellectualize how to open and close your hand. It's just a motion that you've developed, Right? So you, you're not going to you're not going to intellectualize how to open and close your heart. It, you open your heart through prayer. Like I said, if you pray, like the Bible says anything you ask for in my name, you will receive. It. So in the name of Jesus Christ, if you ask and pray that your heart be open so that you can conceive and that your heart be purified so that you can conceive pure ideas in the mind. Right. Because with an impure heart, everything in your mind is not going to be pure. With a closed heart, you're going to have closed ideas. Right. Because all your ideas are going to come from the closeness of your heart. Right. With a, with an unclean heart, you're going to have unclean ideas with an unclean heart. You're going to have unclean imagination in the mind because everything is going to flow from it. Right. So what we want to do, what we have to do is pray to open our hearts. Pray that our hearts be made new. Pray for hearts of flesh in Jesus' name. Pray that we have clean hearts in Jesus' name. You are not going to all the people. Now, I'm not going to say all. Right. But the majority of the people that I've met and talked to that read these concordances, that read these Septuagins, that know how to speak the Greek, that know how to speak the Hebrew, they're all up here. And they don't, they don't have real relationships with God. Their relationship with God is based on what they believe their intelligence and knowledge of the Bible is, right? They're, they're, they're how, how good they are at theology. So they're basing their relationship with God on, being, on having good theology. If I could understand this Bible, if I can express it, if I can intellectualize it, if I can talk to people about it, if I can teach, if I can win the biblical debates, that must mean I'm close to God. Right. No, it does not. Right. God loved David because David was after God's own heart. That was an intellectual understanding. You have you have to have a heart to be after God's heart. You, a, The condition of your heart is something you should pray for every day. That your heart remain pure, that your heart give life and conceive pure ideas so that you can seek God from a pure place of heart. Because you're going, you're going to find God when you seek with your heart. What does Jesus say? When you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ has raised from the dead and is Lord, you will be saved. So if you can confess with your mouth and, and, and know it in your mind or think it in your mind all you want. 
But until you believe it in your heart, until your heart gives, gives to that, you're not going to be saved. It's a place of the heart. And a heart is a place of faith. It's a place of belief. It's a place of hope. It's not a place of, oh, I was able to, I, I believe Jesus Christ is Lord because I went in the encyclopedia and I found out in the year 356, this guy made this and then this guy made this. And then I can, I can pinpoint back that he was really, that he really was, 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 was a man that walked the earth. And then I did, it, it doesn't work like that. This is not an intellectualized thing. Right. It's when you give birth and conceive to an idea in your heart and then your mind gives life to it. and then your heart gives life to the idea. Then your mind conceives it. Then your thoughts begin to revolve and shape around it. Right. So if, if you have a heart filled with lust, you're going to be thinking about sexual things and lustful things all day long. Right. When you have a heart filled with the desire to seek and please God, you're going to be thinking about things that please God, how to seek and how to please God all day long. So I just want to make sure I put that out there. I'm not going to give a long message today. If anybody has any questions, just, just ask me a question. But this is of the heart. You have to, you, and, and I'm not going to say turn the mind off, but there has to be a balance. You have a, you have a mind, you have a heart, you have a gut, right? So all these things have to work in balance, right? You only have 100% for your heart. If you put 200% in your mind, it's not going to do anything because your mind only has the room for 100%. So put, you, you know, you, you know, you, you put that 100% in your heart, put 100% in your mind, 100% in your gut, however you work it out. But you, 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 you're not going to find God using your mind, right? You're not going to find it. You're not going to find anything of value you know, of, of eternal substance using your mind, right? The mind can, can help, you know, guide you. But, the, but before the mind can, can even, un, can, before the mind can even guide you, the heart has to be in the right place. The heart isn't just some muscle that, that pumps blood throughout your body. And, and if you want to just use the analogy, right? If the heart pumps blood throughout your body, that means the heart pumps life throughout your body, which means that whatever the heart is filled with is what's going to be pumped all throughout your body, right? Whatever your blood is filled with is going to be, that's what's going to be pumped all throughout your body. So the blood all throughout your body has been pumped through your body through the heart, right? So all the sin and wickedness and corruption, if that's what's in your heart, that's going to be what's pumped all throughout your body. Right. So that's that's what I'll say, guys. Um, we want to pray for a pure heart and clean hands. Ask God daily. Renew your heart. There's a verse in the Bible that says, uh, purify my heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Purify my heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Pray that you develop a, p a pure and clean heart. Pray to God. Teach you. Give him. Ask God to give you a heart to love your neighbor as yourself. Right. I have when, when I when I was born again and changed my life, I have compassion for people I didn't have compassion for before. But right? you just, I, it's something different in my heart now. When I see somebody in need before I could just drive right by. And, and it's, it's not that I'm, I'm, I'm evil or, or I was evil, but not that I was thinking I was evil or harsh. But it's just like, oh, it's, it's not it doesn't it's, it, it doesn't affect me. I'm just going through my day. I got my own problems. I got my own situation. I got, I got my own things I got to handle and take care. Of, right. But now when you see somebody. When you have that renewed heart, it actually, you feel something. You start to feel compassion and empathy, right? I saw a guy that, that lives in my neighborhood and he, 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 he was a little, he didn't, he, he didn't have all his functions, I'll say, right? And it, it hurt me. Just, I looked at him and it began to hurt me. That never happened before, right? It began to hurt me. It began to, it began to be hard on my heart. It began to hurt, right? So, and so that's what you, and, and I want that to be more. I want to feel a deeper and a deeper desire, a more compassion for others, because that's what drives you to love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what the command is. Right. We have to love our neighbors as ourselves. I know there's a lot of things going on in the world. Right. And a lot of what they place on media, a lot of what's perpetuated and put out there is to cause hardness of heart. Right. We have to understand the Bible says the devil is the God of this world. So when you hear about mass shootings and I'm not saying these things aren't real and they aren't terrible because yes, they are. But when you see it propagated and promoted and keep putting it in your face, you think like even this, this shooting that happened recently, you think it aired on live stream and nobody stopped it by accident. That was intentional so that you could see it right so that you could see it, and it can cause hardness in your heart and it can cause you to hate others and others to hate you. Because if they can harden your heart, they're crippling our, our people's ability to be saved, to find salvation. I know this thing's happening in the world, right? I know I'm, that I'm, I'm not going to discredit that. <laughs> um, the, but the, however, the point is, right, 
you want to make sure you guard your heart. The Bible says guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. All right? Don't get into this whole, you know what I mean? We got to be careful, man. That's all. I know that's a sensitive and touchy subject, so I'm not going to get too deep into it. But we got to be careful and guard your heart for everything that you do flows from it. Guard and protect your heart, right? This is not an intellectual understanding. It's something that is just, it's a heart understanding. You got to feel it. You got to get it. You know, you got to feel it. You got to, and, 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 and you'll get it when you desire to get it. When you desire to use your heart, you'll use your heart. When you, when you can see, the heart is of desire. Our desires come from our heart and our mind figures out how to do it, right? The desires that we conceive come from our heart and then our mind figures out the path and the way to do it. Right, so you want to make sure that you have a heart that gives life to pure desires, so that your mind can figure out a way to reach them. But it has to start there first, right? It has to start there first. So you could say, you know, that, that's 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 what I'll say, um, guys. Let me see who's in the chat. <laughs> I'm, I was going in. I didn't really get. Oh, what's going on? Um, Chase and Yanchi. Yanchi, what's how you doing? Good to see you. You know, ever since I did that video about um. I, I, which I did one video, man, they, and they put me, they put a little, a little, I think, I think, I'm not, I don't know, but I think they put a little shadow ban on me, man, just a little shadow ban after I did that video on some of this stuff, so, but it's all good. What's going on, Art? Good to see you, King Ken. How you guys doing? Olu, my brother, you know, I keep you in prayer, brother. How you doing, Olu? Good to see you too, man. Um, I know, I, I, I know you guys probably seen... I'm sure you guys seen I did the, the video about that the new the Kendrick Lamar album. <laughs> um, I didn't listen to the album, but I did go check out a couple of the lyrics. I said, let me click. The, let me because people was upset with me. And um, you know what, what I was thinking is um, the people that were upset with me, you know, it, it becomes idolatry when we come when we become defenders of blasphemy over defenders of the faith. Right. People love to say, yeah, but Kendrick, he, you know, and, and this is not about Kendrick. This is just about the actions, right? God still loves all of us. And it is not God's will that anybody should perish, but that all would come to repentance. So I'm not, I'm not never judging a people. I'm just discussing and judging the action that took place. And the action was blasphemy, right? The action is blasphemy. And there was recently a video on his Instagram um, with him walking on water. And then on the album, he's saying he's giving praise to the, pro the prophet that they believe in in Islam, right? The, the so-called prophet they believe in in Islam. And then he's saying that he's been praying to trees. He said he was a Christian, but not today. He's been saying that he's, he, he empathizes with, with the LGB community and he's going to choose humanity over religion. Um, and other things. I don't, I don't remember all the things that I've heard, but this, you know, and this is what I told people, because a lot of people have these these concepts. They say, like, yeah, they have this thing like, no, 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 no. He's just trying to like, he's trying to trying to like keep it mainstream and then and then like mix in some some Christian message too. And then so because if he don't do it that way, how is he going to reach the people that don't believe? He gotta say S my D S M D. He gotta say these vain, these vain words and curses. He gotta do this so that he can win the hearts of others and, and kind of slowly introduce them to Christianity. And, it, and, and what biblical reference do we have for Jesus, the apostles that came thereafter, saying that they're going to curse, smoke weed, and do drugs? I'm not saying that's what he's doing. He's being facetious, a hypothetical here, but saying they're going to curse, smoke weed, and do drugs so that they can win drug addicts and people that do drugs. Right? Your creative gift is your creative gift. Right? And if you use it, if, you, if, if, you, if, if it is in your heart to do the will of God, you're going to use it creatively to do the will of God. There's no reference anywhere biblically for anybody deciding that, oh, and I was talking to my brother recently. Shout out to my brother, King Advisor. He's on YouTube as well. Said, you can, you know, you can't put um, Jesus walks and get him high on the same album. You don't get to say, I'm going to just do, if I do one song for Jesus, that's sufficient. I'm going to do 50 songs for the world. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to promote fornication. I'm going to promote drug use. I'm going to promote violence and sex. But then I'm going to just put that one song for Jesus. And that's, that's going to be what gets me in. No, how, you know what I mean? It, it don't work like that. We can't be lukewarm. God said he spits out the lukewarm. We can't be dual minded. Right? We can't be dual minded. We, we don't get to say, I'm going to smoke weed and do drugs. And as long as I, I pray at night, I'm going to heaven. It's that, it doesn't work like that. We can't promote and prop, and I and I was one of them. I'm not. I'm not. That's what I'm. This is what I'm saying. I'm never judging anybody because I was one, but I am judging the actions, just as I condemn and judge my own past actions. I was wrong, you know what I mean. And I've repented and seek forgiveness to, from the Father in heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ. I was wrong. Right? We cannot put out mixed messages. We can't say I'm spiritual and I'm fornicating. Right? 
The Bible says, let no profane talk come out of your mouth. You can't say I'm spiritual and I'm cursing and saying all kind of vain expressions as a form of art. Right. Where's the example of that? Show me. Uh, show me a, a prophet, show me the Lord Jesus Christ, show me the apostles that came thereafter that were deciding that they were going to do both at the same time. Because if they if they cursed and, and, and did evil and, and said bad things, it would help evil people begin to consider their words about. Like where, in what world does that even happen? Let me turn this light off, guys. In what world does that even happen? Like, where, where, in what world does that happen? That's what I'm not just telling you. And th th it doesn't work like that. Right. So, so um, we can't have a mixed message. It's one way. The Bible says narrow is the way and straight is the gate that leads on to life. And few there be that find it. Right. It's not it's not going to be like a, I seen a video about this, but I agree that the majority of people that are in are, that are in churches are not going to make it. And, you know, what I mean, not not to say that I'm going to make it in there now. I'm just saying we, we all got to be working out our salvation with fear and trembling and starving to do the will of the father in heaven. The only people that are going to make it that are those that do the will of the father in heaven. Right. I've been helping brothers again, even, you know, the Bible says many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name? And, and, and Jesus is going to say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. Right. So, yeah, I've been helping brothers be with deliverance. But that doesn't mean that doesn't that's not a testament to me being saved. I'll, you know, I'll get in. We'll, we'll all get in when we do the will of the father in heaven. And it's our job to as well search. The Bible says when you when you, as you improve in this walk, you will be able to dis, to discern. What the will of God is, right? You'll be able to test and discern what the will of God is, right? And in testing and discerning, sometimes you might make a mistake. And I and what by, and I don't mean by mistake fall into temptation. I just mean you you might misstep, and right. And then when you misstep, you'll be chastised, right? But that's all a part of the growing and learning process. We can't be. You know, we can't be afraid to be chastised. I know I've been in that space myself. We can't be afraid to be chastised so we don't want to test out, test and, and figure out what the will of God is. That's why there's, a, there's that, that parable in the Bible of, of, of God gives everybody certain talents. And this guy has five talents. This guy has three. This guy has two. This guy has one. And the guy with one says, I, I knew you were, you, were, you were a shrewd man. So I was afraid. So I hid my talent so I didn't lose it. Right? So we can't. We, we, we can't. We have to all step out there and figure out the will of God. We got to try things. Right. And to try to discern the will of God as we have ourselves. Right. This is a message to the people that have repented of their sins and accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in their hearts. Right. Not in their minds. Right. This is not an intellect. I know we I, I talk to intellectualize it and I, I talk in hopes that I will inspire you to conceive a new idea and desire in your heart. Not that you'll be able to intellectually identify with the words that I'm speaking on the video. Right. I speak in hopes to to inspire a new desire in your heart. Because it is through having desire in your heart that you'll be freed and saved. And I did I did a deliverance recently, uh, just yesterday, the day before yesterday with a brother. And um, just just deliverance from demons, right? And one of the things I, I experienced is some people that really want it, right? The people that experience deliverance fast, they're desperate, right? Because sometimes somebody will call me and I'll, I'll have to, I, I'll feel like I have to talk this. Maybe it'll be better if I talk to this person longer so that they can conceive true desperation and desire in their heart to want to get free. Right. And then there's people that that they call me. Oh, I'm ready. Let's do it. I want this really bad. I want to be delivered. I want to be freed. I don't want these demons. Please help me. Right. And then in those people it's so, that those deliverances happen so fast, so fast, you know, they happen so fast, wherever the person are, is. There was a brother that was walking on it. And I'm not going to say your name, brother, but I always remember him because I, I this is a point of reference for me. He was outside, sta I think, standing on the street corner and me and him are talking on the phone. I said, you want to do deliverance? And, um, and I, he's like, yeah, I didn't know where he was at. I'm thinking he's at home or something like that. So we took him to the deliverance. The brother fell down on the floor on outside. He fell on the floor outside and was screaming on the, on the floor outside. I guess, and I'm guessing his phone, you know, I'm guessing his phone was laid down on the floor too. He fell on the floor screaming, getting delivered. And, I, and, and then I said, brother, where you at? He said, I'm outside. I, he said, I didn't care. I really wanted to be free. Right. And you got some brothers that you say, all right, you want to go to deliverance? They say, all right, I, we can go to deliverance. But right now I'm, 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 at, I'm, I'm outside at the store. Maybe I can call you tomorrow and do it. And you don't really want it. Right. When you really want it, you say, what, where, right. Let's do it right now. Let's go. You know what I mean? That bro, I didn't even know if, if he had told me he was outside. I would have said, hey, brother, you want to you want to get wait till you get back home first. But I didn't even know. He just really wanted it. He wanted to be freed. He didn't care where he was at. You know, I had experience with somebody as well who, um, you know, they, they, they was getting delivered as well. This is somebody that I was with physically. They were getting delivered of demons outside of a restaurant. 
we came out of the restaurant, we were talking for, for and then we were outside the restaurant, delivered the vomiting on the outside of the restaurant, getting delivered to demons. And then, and then um, I asked them if they want to, if they want to speak in tongues, right? If they want to speak in tongues, if they want to be baptized with the spirit of God and speak in tongues and receive the spirit of God. And they said, yeah, but I want to do it, but not right here. Because I don't want to be, you know, I, I guess it, it might have been shame or whatever it is. And I said, no, this is your moment. Right, don't worry about other people. If you're gonna receive, you're gonna receive. This is your moment. Take your moment. Right? And and then then, then they 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 said, all right, they took the moment, they was able to speak on speaking tongues and and right outside the restaurant and, and be delivered. So um, you know, just when you want to, you, it, the people that are gonna be free, the people that are gonna really connect with God, uh, they're gonna be desperate from the heart. I know a lot of brothers have been desperate for women that we've been desperate to, 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 to change and improve our financial circumstances. We've been desperate for a lot of different things. How often have you been desperate for God? How often have you cried? I, I still cry every day, pretty much in prayer and God and desperation to draw nearer to him, to be heard, to be understood, to be loved by the almighty God. You know, just just in desperation, wanting to be closer to God, wanting and and not and, and also wanting to express gratitude, wanting to express appreciation, wanting to express worship, wanting to draw near to God. The Bible says if you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Right. So just wanting to draw near to God, wanting to be closer and closer and closer and closer to the almighty God. Wanting to be closer. Right. And, and, but, and, but that comes from a heart That comes from having a renewed heart and, and being filled with the spirit of God Right When you truly desire to please God When you're not when, when, when the focuses of this world are minimal Of course we still have to eat We have to drink We have to sleep and rest But you know When you just really want to be closer to God And you just have a strong desire But that's something that has to be conceived in the heart So when I speak on this video I speak to inspire a new desire In the heart of the people who listen so that in your heart, you can conceive a new desire. And from that place in the heart, you can seek God from the heart. As I, If anybody's new here, the Bible says, if you seek, you will find me when you seek me with your heart. The Bible says um, in the book of Proverbs, as a mirror or as the water reflects someone's face, so does the heart reflect their life. Right. The Bible says God searches the hearts and rewards every man according to their conduct, the hearts and the mind and rewards each person according to their conduct. So you want to pray for a steadfast spirit, a renewed heart within you to get you have a new and pure heart. I always liken it to, you know, um, like I, I always give the analogy. If the first time somebody starts smoking cigarettes, it burns the throat. The first time you take a sip of alcohol, it burns the throat. But after a while, you, you get numb to it. You don't feel the burn anymore. You, when you take it, you can drink a whole, you don't even got to use a chaser no more. You can just down a whole bottle of Hennessy straight with no chaser, right? And, and, and you know, and you just get numb to that feeling in the throat. And, and, and you know, and after, so after a while you get numb. And, and so a lot of people that smoke cigarettes, they would quit cigarettes if they can get that numb feeling back. I mean, if they can get that, that sensitive feeling back. Now they smoke cigarettes, they don't feel nothing. It's just regular. But if some, if, if they, they was able to pray for a renewed throat and renewed lungs and they was able to smoke a cigarette again and start hacking and coughing like they did the first time, right? They probably stopped smoking because they have a, now they have a renewed throat, renewed lungs. And now they're feeling the pain and burden again of when they first got started. That would help them stop. So when you get a new heart, you lose the numbness, right? A lot of people that if you can fornicate and you don't feel nothing about it, if you, you know what I was talking to a brother about recently as well, and this is going to be very controversial. So I, 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 maybe I'll try to use some different words, but we, we were talking about, I'm just, I'm trying to figure out a way to say it, you know, um, if, right, if, if we, if what is, what is, what is molestation, right? And, and, and one of the reasons why. Uh, we have people have such a big issue and, and as they should with pedophilia is because these are adults that are taking advantage of children that they're that they that, 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 that have no idea what they're doing. Right. They're taking advantage of children that have no idea what they're doing. Right. And using them and and, 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 um, and the children have no idea what they're doing. Right. But a lot of times as men. Right. When we on this whole manosphere, alpha male seduce women journey. Right. We're taking advantage of women, too. We're, we're, take, we're learning how to be, how to project ourselves in a way that causes them to submit. We're learning how to, how to seduce. We're learning how to do all these things to use them for our benefit. So a lot, and I don't want to say it, it's not equal, but it falls under that category of taking advantage of somebody. Yeah, we, yeah a lot of times we're, 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 the woman is more naive than us, right? 
oftentimes most guys are really only going to get with somebody unless they're just an all out they're all out numbed and they just they're just filled with lust but a lot of times guys are only going to get with somebody that's more naive than them in the construct of the world that people are in today so they're only going to get with people that they can take advantage of and the people that aren't as naive they give the guy to look like mm, yeah i heard that before right so they're looking for somebody that they can manipulate they're looking for somebody that they that is less naive than them Right. They're looking for somebody with no or and or somebody with no sensitivity, which means that they can fornicate and feel nothing. That they're completely they're looking for either they're either looking for somebody that is naive that they can manipulate and use or somebody with a completely closed heart that has no spirituality whatsoever and can't feel anything. And so they, and they'll, they'll, they'll just use each other to, to, for that situation. Right. But a lot of times it's falling under the same category. As what people do to people that, you know, it's older guys, younger women, whatever it is, right? It's taking advantage, right? Because, and, and, and you don't, and, you, and the reason you don't, people don't feel it, I didn't feel it, right? It was, I, you know, I, I rationalized it to myself. I felt good. I made them feel good. It was consensual. That, that's what we tell ourselves, right? But where did the ideas come from? If, if this girl really knew that doing this would be harmful to her future, would she still do it? If she understood that, it's one thing to consider it. But if she truly understood that, hey, this act of fornication is going to, is, it can devalue me, right? Now, I believe we could all be forgiven and, and, and washed in the blood of the Lamb of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can't be all forgiven and saved. I'm just saying, in, in a context, you know, this is going to devalue me. This is harmful for me spiritually, Right? It's like people that are taking this solution now. If they truly knew what was in it, would they have taken it? No. People didn't sign up to, to be filled with some of the things that are in this thing. They didn't be signed up. They didn't sign up for the effects of this thing. They signed up for something that they thought it was and it turned out that it wasn't that. So a lot of times the women people, people are getting with, they, if the women are signing up for something they don't fully understand. They just believe in the advertisement. They're, they're trusting the science or they, they're, they're trusting the scientists. They're trusting the seducer. They're trusting the alpha male. Right. That's that's what it really is. A woman putting her trust in you oftentimes. Right. Because a woman really doesn't want to be with somebody that she doesn't respect or look up to in some way, even if it's a small way in some way. So she's putting that trust that you're not going to lead them astray. You know, people don't want to hear this. But and, and this is my this is my opinion. Women as men, and I did a video called Women Are Our Children, we are supposed to be responsible for them. All right? They're responsible for the children, but we're supposed to be responsible for them. And that's, that's you know, so we're not supposed to take advantage and, so, and use them and lead them astray. You know? We, we're supposed to be responsible for them. That's just the reality. They don't have the same, like I said, they're the weaker vessel. They don't have the same you know, judgment that we have. They don't have the same outlook and point of view that we have. We have to be responsible for them. You know, and, and if you're fornicating with any woman, you understand more of what you're doing than she understands of what's happening to her. And the reality is, in multiple ways, both people are going to be damaged, but because she's the weaker vessel, she's going to be left with more damage. You're going to be damaged too spiritually, but she's going to be left with more damage, right? She's going to have to carry and bear the burden. And that's beyond just conceiving a child, right? Just spiritually, right? She's going to, you, 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 you're, just, you're, you're placing, and because you don't feel it as deep, because you're a man, right? You don't even identify with the fact that she might feel it a lot deeper, right? So she's going to bear the burden. It's like if you got spicy food and you, if you got spicy food, and you got a baby with you and you eating the spicy food. It ain't burning your tongue, but give it to the baby. Right. And see what it, you know. So you, you be like, but we get so narrow in our mind and so hard in the heart that we say, and we, we see the effects sometimes. We see how this affects women. Right. After some time, we, we, we see the effect. We just, oh, you know, we, we take it on the ego. We move on. Or, oh, she's catching feelings now. I, you know, I, I, I told her that I just want to use her. But now, now that she doesn't want me to just use her without feelings, I got to go and leave her with all the destruction and the damage. Right. It's like it's like you're telling it's like you're telling the baby. Right. And, and it's not this extreme because women are they're more responsible, but we're still responsible for them saying it's like the baby says you eating some really spicy food. The baby says, mm, I want it. I want it. I want the hot sauce. I want the hot sauce. And you give the baby the hot sauce and they're crying and the baby's looking at you like, wait, why did you give me the hot sauce? You're like, well, you you told me you wanted the hot sauce. 
How you mad at me when you the one that told me you wanted the hot sauce? And that's the baby. Who's, is it, who, whose responsibility is it to make the judgment call? You are saying, all right, I know this is a baby. And so this baby is not ready to, to take hot sauce. So although the baby thinks they want the hot sauce, it's my obligation to not give them the hot sauce because I know that they're a baby and they can't handle it. Now, women are much greater than babies. I'm much more capable, but in the same right, we're still responsible for them. So no matter what they think they want, it's our job to say, I know better than this. And, you're, and we're responsible for it. We're responsible for it. Right? If you get started feeding your baby hot sauce because they wanted it, you're responsible for it no matter what the baby said they wanted. So if you start fornicating with a woman, just in, in, and, and a lot of the time there's some seduction that has to, be, has to take place um, on, on one level or another. But he, even if there wasn't, even if she wanted it more than you, right? it's your job to be responsible. Make sure you guys hit the like button if you're in here. It's your job to be responsible. You're, that's your responsibility as a man. We got to be responsible. And people don't, I know people don't like accountability and responsibility conversations, <laughs> right? We don't, we don't want to be responsible, right? But that's the reality. That's the responsibility, right? Let me see what you guys are saying in the chat, man. I know I've been going, I've been going all day. It says you lose the moment you become the person that hurt you. You got to be great to not reciprocate negativity. I mean, we all, we said we need the Lord. You know what? I, I'm, I'm going to talk about this as well. My next class is probably going to be called, it's going to be about the heart. What I'm talking about today, I'm going to really break it down over three hours and, sorry guys, and really get deep into it. Um, but, you know, I, I'm going to do it. My next video that I'm going to do is going to probably going to be called the 12 types of spirit. Because in doing deliverance is, I, you be get, I begin to get these understandings that like there are a lot of people dealing with things in secret that, you know, there are a lot of people dealing with things in secret that they don't really talk about. And, um, you know, and, and when you when you do deliverances, like I said, people have to open up and confess their sins and stuff like that. But you realize that these things are a lot more common than people realize. Right. Because these spirits are operating. These spirits are operating like the, the, the like I say, let's say a spirit of violence and, and anger. Right. Those spirits are operating in all communities. Right. And it's up to how we each protect ourselves. That's going to well, how how much we each ground ourselves in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ is going to determine whether or not those spirits come in and wreak havoc. But there's, there's different kinds of spirits, right? Of sexual confusion and all of this stuff. These spirits are operating in all communities, right? And if we don't have, if we don't have, um, you know, just full households and homes and, and these things like that, these things are operating. And a lot of parents don't know. A lot of parents have to work and do stuff. They don't really know what's really happening. But these spirits are operating. They're not respecters of persons. So, and it just, it just, I can't say much now because I want to, you know, I'm going to present this in a better way in an actual video. But um, a lot of these demonic spirits that, that attack people in different ways, gender, confusion, identity, sexual, all these different things, um, they're operating and they're running amok. And if we don't have protection through being submitted to Jesus, to God through Jesus Christ, we don't have protection. And they're going to, they're running amok to cause destruction and destroy. And they don't respect the suburbs more than the hood. That's that we we like that. They don't think they ain't gonna the home the, the spirit of sexual confusion. They gonna say, oh he, he he from the hood. He's street. You know what I mean? He, he you know he he from the hood and he from the street. So I'm not I'm gonna skip over him and go to the, the to, to the suburbs and mess with them over there. No, it's the same spirits and the same kinds of spirits in all these communities looking for a way in, right? Looking for some bro brokenness that they can destroy. They don't care that where you from. So you being from the hood don't mean absolutely nothing in the spirit world. It actually makes you more vulnerable more often than not because there's more temptation to do evil there. You know? And so it's like, it's actually, the, it's, like a, it's like a field day, right? For unclean spirits. So it's, it's certain communities and You got liquor stores on corners. So now they could, every time you walk outside, they could tempt you to buy alcohol. You got, you got, the, you got the poppy stores on the corners selling the, the, the Lucy's. Every time they can tempt you to buy, there's so much temptation. You got women dressing provocatively. They just run amok in, 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 in these communities. Right. Let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. Um, I love Brandon. Good to see you, man. <laughs> I love you, brother. Good to see you, man. God bless you, brother. Right. That's what I agree, brother. All those are either in or out. No lukewarm. 
There is no lukewarm. There's no dual messages. There's, the Bible says the God spits out the lukewarm. He'd rather you just be completely cold. Don't say I'm gonna put one song about Jesus on my album. Just make 50 songs about you know what I mean. I mean don't I mean turn your whole life to God. I'm just saying hypothetically, you, the God spits out the lukewarm, man. We can't be cold. You got to you either in this or you out of it. We don't do both. And that goes for every artist, whatever. We, we don't get to do both. You either in this or you out of it. You do not get to do both. You don't get to God. So if you make friendship with the world, you become an enemy to God. And I talked about that in my recent, my, my recent three-hour class is available for everybody interested. It's called The Reason You Are Alive. It's about purpose and why we were created and why we are alive. If you want to get that three-hour class, email me, eddiefuse.gmail.com. Become a Diamond member on Patreon. Or you can sign up directly on my website, eddiefuse.com slash three-hour class. Um... Those are just long, extended three-hour breakdowns of some of the stuff that I talk about here in just more detail. Um, but yeah, man, you, we don't get to do both. You got to pick a side. We don't get to be idolized the woman that we, that we oh, I, I, if you, you know, if you're catching one-itis, what they call one-itis, and I, 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 I know this is probably going to reach somebody, you outside the will of our Father in heaven. If you're catching one-itis, I mean, you're obsessing over a woman, you're outside the will of God because she's becoming an idol onto you. That's idolatry. And I've, I've already, I've, I've dealt with that already by the grace of God. Somebody that would need a deliverance from idolatry because they were obsessing over a woman. And that our spirit, our, the spirit of idolatry, the demon of idolatry was keeping them tied and obsessing over this one particular woman. We don't get to do both. You have to pick a side. You don't get to play for God and play for the world at the same time. You don't get to go out to the club on Friday and go to church on Sunday and, and somehow you're going to just balance it out and still go to heaven and everything's going to be all good. That's lukewarm. We don't do lukewarm. We cannot be lukewarm. You have to pick a side. Which team are you playing for? You don't get to sh shoot shots in both back baskets. You don't get to kick balls in both goals. You know, you got to pick a side. And if you have no side, you do have a side. You, you can't. This is the one thing where there are no fence sitters. You either are a child of God or you're a child of the devil. And there's a Bible verse that talks about that. That, that, that this children of the devil, people that work on righteousness are children of the devil. Right. The devil and demons aren't threatened by you reading the Bible if your heart is still closed. They're not threatened. You can read the Bible all you want. There's plenty of people that know the Bible left and right. They, they, they still need deliverance. No one's threatened by you having biblical knowledge if your heart ain't right with God. If you won't truly have a true desire to see God, if you truly haven't been born again, if you truly don't understand that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father unless they come through him. Nobody, no, no they're not threatened by that. Yeah, go ahead, read your Bible, go to church and sing. It's okay because on, on Monday morning, you'll be right back with me. And it's actually better you go to church because at least you think you're doing something. And that'll keep you from realizing. You'll think that because you're going to church and you're praying and giving tithes and listening to a good sermon, you'll think that they're not there. Right? You'll think that they're not there. Do go to church. It's better for them that you do read the Bible because as long as you're doing that and your heart is still closed and you still live in the world, they know that you're deceived. Right? It's actually better because it, you'll, 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 you'll think that you're keeping them at bay. The, the, the job of a demon is to operate quietly and silently so you don't know that they're there. Because if you ever found out that they were actually there, you'd want to get them away from you. And you'd fight and strive to get them away from you. So these videos, this is why I try to bring awareness to the issues. And I, I talk about these topics so people that are feeling tingles and, and, and tingles in their body and waves and, 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 and different feelings and pains and pressures in their head, pressures in their lower back, pressures above their shoulders when I'm talking. So that they know that there's other things at work here. Right. And then you could eat. Like I said, if anybody needs to learn, I'm speaking boldly, guys, but I just want to say I, I, everybody that support me. I love you guys. I used to be like back in, in my, in, in, you know, before I was born again, I wanted to I was the I was the quote unquote alpha male. And if you want to call me and speak to me, you got to pay me this money. And, and I, you know, I did that stuff. But now I'm here to be a brother to brothers and a, and a brother to sisters and a friend to friends, guys. Um, I, I'm not you know, I mean, if anybody if you anybody wants to donate to me, that's up to you. But I, everything I do right now is free. Um, if, if you want to do a consultation or a talk or you, you know, if you need help with, you know, it, it, of course, if it has to be centered about on, on faith and it's centered on relationship with God. The Bible says freely you receive, freely you give. So um, at this point, um, anybody wants to talk, you need deliverance or prayer, just email me. We'll get on the phone and we'll talk. You know, we'll get on the phone and we'll talk. Um, 
And you know, if, I, if everybody, I know I've, I've got, I have a list of people that still need, that still are waiting for deliverance. You know, I'm still like trying to balance out time and, and I got a few different things I got to do. I'm still balancing out time, getting it all together. But everybody that's emailed me that wants deliverance from demons and wants prayer, um, I, I, what I would what I would advise and recommend you do is email me again if you haven't. For the people that have, you know, and there's a couple of people that have already. So I'm not talking to you. Just just email me all your sins and your wrongdoings so that we already have a, a base for where we're going to get started from, right? And the last thing I want to say this to everybody, and I'm saying it's not the last thing, but you cannot cheat your way into deliverance, guys. Which means that if you are ashamed to tell about the 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 the, 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 the dirty thing you did when you were a child or the dirty thing you did in your younger years and you're ashamed to bring it up because you feel guilty and shameful about it, you cannot hide and disclose sin and still be delivered. You have to be willing to be vulnerable. Anything you tell me is going to be confidential. And if I do ever reference it, I will never attach a name to it in any way whatsoever. I will just reference it maybe as a story to help others, but in no way will I connect it to you or even use details that can connect it to you. It'll all be personal. Um, but you, you know, a lot of, some people that wanted to get delivered, um, or one person in particular, but I'm sure this has happened more than once. They, um, they said, I said, have you told me all your, have you confessed every sin? And it's usually the big sins that they don't want to confess to be the main things holding them back. They said, yeah, Eddie, I told you everything. And, and then we try to go through deliverance and it's not, they feel it, but the, the, the spirit isn't coming out. They feel something starting to come out. They coughing, but it's not coming out. You know, and I, and then, and then later on, I find out that they said, yeah, Eddie, I didn't tell you everything. I was ashamed to tell you this. You know, so you cannot, you're not going to, God is not going to be mocked. You're not going to cheat your way into freedom. You're not going to cheat your way into healing. If you really want to be delivered, you have to be willing to be open and vulnerable and let it all out. You know what I mean? I'm not going to judge you. I've done stupid and ridiculous things in my life. And by the grace of God and faith in the name of Jesus Christ and by the sacrifice of our Lord and Jesus on the cross, his burial and his resurrection, I've been washed and cleansed in the blood of the lamb. I've been born again, a new creation. Right. And I've been forgiven of my sins. Right. So, so I'm no one to judge anybody. I'm not here to judge you. Now, we will, you know, we, we condemn the act and we repent of the act, but we don't condemn the person, right? Um, you know, unless the person, the person will condemn themselves if they stay in their sin. All right? and, and ultimately, they'll be judged by the Lord. Um, but it, we can all, no matter what you've done, you can be forgiven. So I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not anyone's judge. I'm not the judge. The judge is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's on the seat of judgment. He's the one that's going to judge. Um, but so if anything you tell me, you confess it. God will forgive you. You know, you ain't doing anything to me per se, but I, I'm, I can't. How can I hold anything against anybody God forgives you for? Um, and not, not that I ever would anyway. I'm just saying, um, I know there's a lot of judgment in the world in that way. Now, we condemn. We spot out wrong and condemn it. But judgment is like thinking it's placing myself or somebody placing themselves over you because of something you did. All sin falls short of the glory of God. Every sin falls short of the glory of God. All right, let me see what you guys are saying in the chat really quick. Olu, appreciate you, brother. Olu, for the donation. Thank you, brother. Um, I see a couple guys in the comments. I still got a call. If you if you email me for deliverance, I remember you. I, I I have the list in my email. You know, I have the list in my email. I have the list for my email. Just make sure you're sincere and you really want it. That's all. Because it, it, things move a lot more. You know, a lot a lot things just it, it's a, it's a lot more aggressive things happen a lot more more fluid i would say eddie if you can decide in quick words summarize adam and eve verse and if you think it's now relatable to this now society between what which verse are you talking about king ken which verse are you talking about her desire shall be for her husband and he shall rule over her which bird which verse are you talking about it seems the modern churches look for god academically 100 percent fiji that's 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 the, that's that's why i made this video today um, they want to be theologians and it's nothing wrong with being a theologian, but this is, there's a balance of this. The Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall have power, right? So the Paul said, I didn't just come to you with words. I came to you with a teaching and a demonstration of power. So it's, it's nothing wrong with being a, a theologian. It's, it's good. The, knowing the Bible is, is good, right? Knowing the word of God is good. But if, if, if knowing the word of God doesn't come with you having the spirit's power, then, then, then all you, if all you have is words, then that's not the teaching. 
The, the apostles walked in power. They did signs. They did wonders. They healed people. They cast out demons. The Bible says, these are the signs that shall follow those who believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. They shall take up snakes and drink deadly poison. They shall not harm them. These are the signs that follow those who believe. So if you, it's, not, it's, it's cool to be a theologian. Shout out to all the theologians, all the biblical scholars, all the guys that know the Septuagint front and back, all the guys that know all the concordances and, and know them all front and back. Shout out to you guys, but it also has to come with power. Right? It also has to come with power. We have to walk. If Jesus cast out demons, if, if the apostle Paul's and Peter's and the disciples cast out demons, even the seven sons of Sceva cast out demons, and they weren't even true believers yet. That's why they were ultimately attacked. But there's people that weren't even, that weren't, that, that, that weren't scholars. And one of the things we got to also realize is that the, the, I believe the printing press wasn't invented until the 14 or 1500s. Right? The printing press wasn't, wasn't, and, and so the, and the Bible that we have today wasn't even formed until the year 323 in the Council of Nicaea, right? So, so f the first and second and third church, they didn't have the Bible the way we have it today to be able to be studiers, right? To be able to be like, now, if you, if you wanted to hear the word of God, they had churches and you would go to the church. And for the most part, I'm sure some people can get their hands on it, but it wasn't the Bible. Was, there wasn't a printing press where the Bible was widely able to be distributed the way it is today. Or the way it's been for the last couple hundred years. So all these people had to walk in the Spirit's power. They didn't necessarily have a cell phone with the Bible out on their phone. Or, or, or everyone didn't have access to a Bible that they can just carry in their hands and walk with it everywhere. Right? They had to walk in the Spirit's power. Right? They had to be, they would let, this is why we, right now we depend so much on our technology instead of depending on the Holy Spirit. They had to walk on this in the Spirit's power. They didn't really have access the way we have to all, to Bible, all the Bible, all the Bible. Right. You hear the word of God in the church. You got, you know, there's places that you can get it. But everyone didn't just have access to a Bible the way we have today. And they were walking in more power and signs and wonders than we are today. Right. So that's another thing that has to be realized. Um, a lot of people were upset. Kanye won a gang of awards for gospel music. It ain't. Them awards don't got nothing to do with God, brother. Those are, them award shows don't got nothing to do with God. Um, King Advisor, what's up, brother? Good to see you, man. I just I actually just shout, I shouted you out a little while ago. I don't know if you um if you just got here or not. This may be lengthy for the word says in Romans 1 through 28, verse 32. And they did not like to retain God in the knowledge for that God gave them over to their reputable mind to do it. All right, I don't... I, I know that verse you're talking about, but you didn't, the whole thing wasn't written there. I thought you said reading the Bible helps break. Reading the Bible does break chains, brother. What? It's the word of God. I, I don't, I didn't contradict that in any way. I'm just saying that in the first and second church, everyone didn't have access to a Bible. We are fortunate to have access to the Bible today. We're very fortunate to be able to, to be, to, to everywhere you go, you can find and buy a Bible. We're very fortunate to have it like that. It wasn't always that way. That's all I'm saying. But people still was able to walk in and, you know, walk in the spirit's power. They were more, they were led. They, they were relying on, on, on their, their relationship, their faith, their relationship with Jesus Christ, spreading the gospel. That Jesus Christ came in the flesh and died on the cross for the sins of the world, that all who believe unto him shall be saved. And then, you know, of course, you have a church, you have a place where the word of God can be spread. And I'm sure there were some Bibles available, but it wasn't like it is today. Um, do you have to be a theologian to fully understand the Bible? No, if you have, if you, have you, you have the Holy Spirit's guidance, brother. Yep, those short chapters in the New Testament were letters written to the churches. They had those letters and rest with them. Right. What well, is like I said, that's what I said. People had people had to rely more on, more on more on the, the Spirit, and that's why I think one of the reasons today we just we we're so like we just not we just they were they were just walking in, in more and more power. It's happening though. This is what I tell people, man. The the same way they used to say the revolution is not going to be televised. The revival is not going to be televised either. Right now, there are people being healed. There are people being delivered of demons. You know, um, there are people being miracles and signs and wonders are happening. The re not not only the revolution won't be televised. The revival is not going to be televised. Um, you know what I mean? The revival. Then you're not going to YouTube already doesn't even allow you, people to tell the truth about the solution on YouTube. They they they're not even allowed on the app. So the Bible won't be tell. I mean, the, the revival is not going to be televised. When, when you see just the true works and miracles and signs and wonders happening. You can, you can see miracles on YouTube now. People are doing them. 
But I'm just saying in mass, it's not going to be put placed on your front page. It's not going to be shown to you if you're not looking for it. Right. It ain't going to come on your channel five news. Oh, today somebody just did a miracle. Peter says, why do you think Christianity is the biggest truth and not other popular religions like Islam and Buddhism? Well, he, one of the things I tell people um, is that, um, for, for one, Buddhism doesn't claim to be the, be the only truth. Neither does Hinduism. But n n no one, and this is where, you, that's a mental question again, but the claims Jesus Christ made, and I don't even want to say claim, the truth that he told, but no one else made, stated this kind of truth. Jesus said, I am the son of God. I sit at the right hand of the father and he's the judge. He said, all judgment is going to be given to me. People think they're going to be judged by God. No, you're not going to be judged by God. God said he's given all, God said he judges no man. He's given all authority to judge to the son. Jesus said, he sits on the seat of judgment. He is the son of God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the father unless they come through him. So he said, he doesn't say there are many different ways. Oh, no, no. He says that he came as God in the flesh. He did. He, and he, and he, and he, and he wore that. Right? So my thing is no one else, the, 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 the other prophets in these other religions did not say that they sit at the right hand of God. People would have thought they was crazy. Right? Right? But he came making the, the boldest claims of all that, that anyone had, any man had ever made. That he not only he sits at the right hand of God, he is the son, the only begotten son of God. He came in the flesh. He was before Abraham was. He existed from the beginning. Everything was created through him. He said everything was created through him and, and he sits on the seat of judgment. No one else made these claims. No. And so you want It's not no one else. It's not about citing support to, 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 to this belief. No, no. No one said this but him. Everyone said they may say, oh, you got to serve God and they have an intellectual understanding or they have a philosophy. But no one said, no, it's dumb. You have to come through me to get to God. Right. That you have to come through me to get to God. Not me, but you have to go through Jesus Christ to get to God. That they sit at the right hand of God, that they are God's son and that salvation comes through them. Right. And, and that at the end, at the end of the world, when, it, when it's time for judgment, that Jesus Christ sits on the seat of judgment and he's going to judge us. Not the father God. So he came and said, I'm going to judge you guys. I'm here in the flesh as a man, but I'm going to be your judge. I am the way to, 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 to the father God. I'm saying that's what Jesus said. Not me. <laughs> not me at all. Um... I actually heard that Kendrick had a lyric on his album. I didn't read this lyric. I heard it. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, I apologize to the brother. But he had a lyric about, about um, you got to go through the hymn to get to the father on the album. I don't know. If you guys heard it, you guys can confirm or deny that. But I, I believe that's what that's what I, I, what I, what I read and was, when I heard. Which I think that's just like, you know, anyway. Eddie, you're the first person to turn me on to fasting. Do you still practice fasting periodically? Yeah, but I fast once a week. Um, I fast once a week. I dry fast once a week. Um, and I think it's just, it, for me, you know, it's, it's sacrifice. It's, 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 it's humbling yourself. And it's, it's, it's not easy, right? It's, 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 <laughs> and it's, um, but I feel like I, I, by the grace of God, I believe it keeps me spiritually sharp. And it's, uh, I take out, I fast one day a week. Um, so I do a dry fast one day a week. I don't. You know, for 24 hours, sometimes 36 hours, um, but mostly 24 hours. I, for one day a week, I fast. It's but something like I did a three-day fast recently as well. So I did a one day. I did a, I did the one day, then I just did two more days. But but regardless, I still fast one day a week. If I was if I decided which I'm gonna do soon, a fruit cleanse. If I decided I'm gonna do a a, a, a 30 day fruit cleanse where I'm only gonna eat fruit for 30 days, I, I would still keep my one day a week fast. So I'm gonna fast one day a week. And if sometimes I'm, I might like I, like one I had if something really important is happening I'll say all right I can't do the I do it the same day I do my fast the same day every week but I I'll put it off either I'm gonna do it the day before or the day after if I can't do it um, that day and I think it's better to do it the day before so you don't fall into like all right I can't do it if I normally fast on Tuesdays I, I got something really important to do on Tuesday so I'm gonna do it on Monday don't say I'm gonna just do it on Wednesday because 
I, I'm busy on Tuesday. Don't try to put it on to the next day for you, you, you run the risk of falling into temptation and missing it. Just do it the day before then. Do it the day before. And I'm going to do that myself because normally I put it the next day, but that's actually a better idea. Do it the day before. That way you stay on top of it. If you just, if, if, if something happens to come up, but I say pick one day a week that you're going to fast and fast every day that week, just one day a week. And it'll keep you spiritually sharp. It'll purify, cleanse you health wise, but also of the heart and everything like that. It'll just continue to, to, to make you improve you progressively day by week by week by week. And, 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 and also strengthen your relationship. Just, you know, it's humbling yourself. All right, guys, I think I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it up. You know, guys, like I said, Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the son of God. He's the only way to the father. This is not a quiet belief system. Jesus says, if you confess me before man, I will confess you before my father in heaven. We have to wear this faith and we have to, we have to be outwitted about it. We have to speak up and be shameless for our belief and our faith in Jesus Christ and the father in heaven. We got to wear this. We got to own it. And, and we got to, we got to carry our cross. Um, so by the grace of God, we do have Bible. So I always recommend guys read your Bible. If you have not read the Bible, read it, read it, read it. And, and don't don't start from Genesis. Start from the book of Matthew and read until the book of Revelation. Read the New Testament first, because that's where we are today. And after you read that twice, then go back. You know what I'm saying? And into the book of Genesis. And if you find yourself falling asleep, usually that's a sign that you might need deliverance. But it doesn't matter. Just keep reading. If you don't understand it, it doesn't matter. Keep reading. Just get it into your subconscious. Just get it in there. Keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. Even if you don't understand it, even if you don't remember what you just read, don't stop. Keep reading. Keep reading. Read from Matthew to Revelation. Matthew to Revelation. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, to all the way to Revelation. Read from Matthew to Revelation. If you don't, if you if you read chapter three and you don't remember what chapter two and one said, it doesn't matter. It's in there already. It's in there. You want to just make sure it's in there. So just read it in there get it in there so just keep reading you don't got to remember it consciously this time on the second round you'll focus on remembering it on the first round just read it most people i just want people to get that story in them get the gospel get the story of jesus christ in your mind so that they can just th th that word can begin to begin to to do work get it in and most people haven't read it most people haven't read the bible because they assume they already know what it says and i used to think the same thing when i finally actually sat down and read the new testament i was shocked all the things that were all, all these answers i was looking for were right here the whole time and i had never read it i had read all these other books about the law of attraction all these other books about the seven hermetic principles all these deep books about kabbalah all this all the stuff that and th what i was looking for was right there the truth that i was looking for was right there the whole time and i just never read it because I just figured it was simple and popular book and everybody else already knows this. No, it's so much there that you haven't heard. It's so much there that you've been looking for, the, the answers that you've been, this is the truth. This is the way, this is the life. This is the Lord over all creation. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is the, the, the word of God here, right? This is the direct words from the Lord of God, the Father God creator of the heavens, the earth, the seas, and all that's in it, sent his son and gave us direct words from the father in heaven for us to live by today this is what you need to know this is what you need to know no matter what you, this even if you read it when you were a teenager it, it's going to hit different today you have a different understanding now that frontal lobe is a little your, the, the mind is a little more developed right but seek god through your heart which was the whole point of this video seek god through your heart and read that bible read that bible from matthew if you've never read it before read from get the bible app it's free Get the NIV version to read um, and just get it in your subconscious. Get it in there. And even if you don't understand it, keep on reading and get it in your mind. Just read it, guys. Read from Matthew. Get that story in you. If you need help, prayer, deliverance, guidance, I'm, a, I'm here to be a brother or a friend to as many people as I can. Email me, eddiefuse at gmail.com. If you want to talk or set up a call, whichever, whichever you want to do. Um, I got I got a, a list that I get to, but depending on the situation, sometimes I have to take people from the top of the list. Um, but I, that's that's what we got to do, guys. Read that Bible. Pray. Seek God. Pray at least two, three times a day. Seek God. The Bible says you draw near to God. He'll draw near to you. Seek him. Give the Father worship and praise. Sing songs to the Father. Worship him. Worship the almighty creator of all things. You exist because of him and everything around you that you enjoy and likes exists because of the almighty God. Give God praise. Honor, glory, honor, and worship to the Father in heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ. Give God praise. Worship daily. Pray daily. 
fast weekly read your bible daily from matthew to revelations and you will start to see change in your life things will change chains will be broken things will be loosened and you will go free and you you know and, and have a full-on relationship with god through the lord jesus christ you can become a child of god the bible says we did not receive a spirit of fear but we received a spirit of adoption when we became sons of god now we cry out abba father through jesus christ you become a son of god where god becomes your father and you become his son this is the almighty god the, the creator of everything can become your father there's nothing more privileged than having a direct relationship with god when he can become your father jesus christ is the way every demonic spirit and everything else bows to the name of jesus christ every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess that jesus is lord every demonic spirit submits to the lord jesus christ he is the king of kings and lord of lords over everything and they all bow and yield and tremble in his name, in Jesus' name. They all tremble at the name of Jesus Christ, for they know he is king. And I know we know the Lamb of God that came and, 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 and sacrificed himself on the cross for the sins of the world. But God, is, there's also a lion. They, they fear the Lord Jesus Christ. They, they fear the Lord Jesus. You better <laughs> read your Bible. Jesus, about the verse, Jesus said, Christ said, I, they said, why are your clothes staying red? He said, I've been treaded, I treaded the wine press alone in my anger. Right? In the Bible says when God, when Jesus says he comes back, he's going to fill places with dead bodies. He's going to execute the heads of many countries. This is a this is, this is serious, man. This is, make sure you guys are following me on Instagram as well. I make a lot of posts that, that I feel like are helpful to people and bring awareness to certain topics. Eddie Fuse on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter, Eddie Fuse on Twitter. I don't really use Clubhouse anymore to talk, but maybe I'll use it again at some point. Eddie Fuse on Twitter. And um, appreciate you guys, man. Um, let me see if there's any last chats before I go. Um... Aaron, oh, he said, I have a similar routine. I appreciate it. Appreciate you too, brother. Thank you, man. Right. Some pray, brother. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. He, that's, that's the way to God. That's the way to God. You pray in the name of Jesus Christ to God. That's the way. Jesus is the way to the Father God. There's no like, oh, dear God, dear universe. It don't work. Like in the name of Jesus Christ, you come to God. So that's what I got for you guys today, guys. I love you guys. I appreciate anybody that, like I said, you need somebody to be a brother to you, whatever it is, email me at ephesogmail.com and I'll be there for as many people as I can. Um, that's it, guys. Oh, appreciate you. Appreciate all the donations. I got another donation from somebody else. God's greatest. I appreciate you too, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Um, appreciate you guys. All right, guys. Peace and love.